Why, hello! Welcome to Stephanie's Playtime. In my mind, I'm a girl. I was never allowed to be a little girl. So I'm filling that tank of little girl experiences. There's a lot of people worried about their safety because I identify as a six-year-old. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter. Oh gosh, I feel like this channel is becoming a predator hunter channel and I'm actually 100% okay with it. So today we are continuing to clean house within the trans community, this time with Stefankny Walsh. Yes, that's actually how you pronounce the name, Stefankny. Ew. Like the name alone kind of makes me mad, but whatever. So Stefankny Walsh is a 50 something year old man who abandoned his entire family, his wife and seven, seven kids to uh, move on as he puts it and live his life as a six year old girl. Yeah. He identifies as a six year old girl. <laughs> So Stefankny is a fetishist as well as a predator, much like Jessica Uni, but is somehow just skating by because once you add the word transgender to a story or a person, suddenly that person, you just, you can't criticize them because, you know, that's just where we're at in society right now. So before we get into this complete mess of a story and go over why and how this person is a predator, I just want to say that a criticism I've been getting lately is that I harp a bit too much on the negative or bad apples of the trans community rather than uplifting positive stories or positive people. So I decided I'm going to make a change and at the end of this video, after we go over this main story, I will be highlighting someone I feel in the trans community deserves praise and someone who I think is really cool. So that's something I plan to just start doing whenever I do these types of videos. So watch to the end for that, but uh, back to this person. So like I said, Stefankny made news when he abandoned his seven kids and wife to become a six-year-old girl. In a quote, speaking of his family, Walsh says, I can't deny I was married. I can't deny I have kids, but I'm moving forward now. Now, I don't really know how you move forward from having seven kids by any other name. If the transgender aspect was not part of the story, this person would just be called a deadbeat dad. The children found Walsh's coming out to be difficult. In letters they wrote to their father, they detailed their embarrassment to the situation, which Stefankny read out in a documentary years later. Dear Dad, I, I feel, feel it is very embarrassing to see you walk around like that. And I hate how you always make jokes about being a girl. It makes me feel weird around you. Seriously? I'm not crazy about the fact that you wish you were a girl. Every time I see you, I think you're about to walk upstairs and change into something girly or say something girly. I get a little grossed out every time I see you wearing something girly. I feel kind of weird that you wear dresses. Wear dresses. So after leaving his family, Stepontine was actually adopted by a new family who allows him to age play, which is a fetish, um, in their household and act as their child. To make matters worse, that family has children and Stefankny has access to those children. Stefankny plays with those children. Yeah, I'm actually gonna throw up. And feast your eyes, if you dare, on the super strange videos posted by Stefankny on his YouTube channel. You probably notice there's a lot of people worried about their safety because I identify as a six-year-old. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I just use it as play therapy and it helps me cope with depression and anxiety. If you found this video informative, please subscribe below and we will show you what transphobia and what trans support look like. Become a trans ally. Restaurants. I just need to use the and, um, Women's. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> So do you guys remember that whole slippery slope argument that people like myself were talking about for the longest time where if you just allow anyone to self-identify as trans and claim to be a trans woman with no basis behind it other than I said so, it leads open the door to the Jessica Yaneves of the world and the Stefankneys of the world because that's a real thing and it's happening. 
And I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, Blair, of course, trans people, like any other group of people, can be predatory. That's just, you know, human nature for a small segment of the population. True. But what we don't need is people who are not even trans enacting this predatory behavior under the guise of being trans, under the blanket, the protection of being trans, really. People like Jessica and Eve and people like Stefani actually use the trans label as a protective force field to stop people from criticizing their predatory behavior. It's not who they are, it is their scapegoat. Now, Stefani is not a trans woman. Stefani is a fetishist posing as a trans woman. If you don't believe me, Stefani actually has a fet life account right? Where the entire basis of their posts and activity is on them being trans. That's not being trans. Sorry. And if you think these people are not actually being protected or defended, you're wrong. Rebel Circus wrote a story on Yaniv saying, while it may be a bizarre story, Stefani has found happiness and that's what's important. Yeah, that's what's important. Stefani finding happiness not protecting children from being forced to play with Stefani while he's age playing as a six-year-old girl. Priorities are really in check. Daily Extra calling Stefani a trans spokesperson. Being so public and being so out there and being a role model, you become kind of a spokesperson for this in some ways. It's what? not even a spokesperson. I have a whole bunch of friends that want to play. I have a whole bunch of friends that want to play. This is not any kind of spokesperson for me. I speak for myself as a trans person, and I think it's disgusting that this person is actually put in the media as a trans spokesperson. And they get to lead pride marches. This article places Stefani as a victim of anti-LGBTQ attacks and actually defends him the entire time with no mention about how he wants to play with children. Age playing, which is a fetish, like I said. You're enacting a fetish around children. So there you go. There are examples of media publications completely protecting and defending Stefani simply because the word trans is attached to it. And that might not be how the writers or the publications actually feel, but if it's not how they actually feel, it's them capitulating to the mob, which will attack you for criticizing anything trans related at all. I am just disgusted by this person and the fact that they have access to kids. And I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, sort of like talking about predators in the trans community recently, but this is what I'm passionate about lately because I kind of just been thinking, you know, how can we as trans people, as LGBT people, right? How can we expect the general population at large to understand and then even go further than understanding accept us if this is constantly what's propped up as the spokesperson for who we are, the face of what we are? It's a joke. As long as the Jessica Yanivs and the Stefanknies and the It's Ma'am people are the face of trans people in the public's perception of who and what we are, we're never going to have the amount of respect that we think that we need. This type of thing cannot go unchecked. You know, we have to be able to stand up and say as trans people, you know what? Maybe it's not the best thing to verbally abuse people in the middle of the store and knock over, you know, merchandise because someone called you a sir when you look completely male. Maybe that's not the best behavior. Maybe you shouldn't be harassing businesses for not waxing your nether regions. Just a thought. Maybe you shouldn't be age playing around kids. Kind of disturbing. So that's why I think it's important. But now for some positivity, I really wanted to, like I said in the beginning of the video, highlight someone that I think deserves praise and is a success story in the trans community. I came across Kimberly Herrera on Instagram. She works in real estate and she is also a mortgage loan consultant. She operates out of Southern California and recently helped a family use their veterans benefits to become first time homeowners. I think that is amazing. I think Kimberly is an excellent example of a trans woman who is successful, glamorous, gives back to her community and helps people. This is, in my opinion, an example of trans excellence, and I would love to see people like this talked about more when we talk about trans people. Shout out to you, Kimberly. I'm probably going to be buying a home in the next couple of years, so I will hit you up. And before I go, oh my God, I'm going to be doing a meetup in San Francisco for my birthday exactly one month from today, September 14th, San Francisco. All the details will be right here and I really hope you can come make it out. It's gonna be totally free, uh, meet and greet, hang out, let's take pictures, let's have fun. I would honestly love nothing more than spending my birthday and meeting you guys. But that is it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I love you, leave a comment. I'll be reading every single comment. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Thank <laughs> you.